to Simply Home and Harvest and welcome to Simply Home for the Holidays. I'm Jen if you're new here and Christmas is quickly approaching. We are just days away and if you're like me, you'd like to have easy make ahead, if you can, meals for the holidays and especially for Christmas morning. As you're unwrapping presents and enjoying time with your family, you don't want to be busy in the kitchen. So today I'm going to show you three breakfast ideas, then some of them you can make ahead or you can make just prep a little bit that morning. So the first one I'm going to show you today are some cinnamon rolls. These are absolutely delicious. I've made them different ways. I've made your, your regular typical cinnamon roll. I've made pumpkin cinnamon rolls and this time I made some apple butter cinnamon rolls. So I'm going to show you how to make the yeast bread that um, you'll make the cinnamon rolls out of. I'm gonna show you that step by step so that you will have that one. So here we go. Now the first thing we're gonna do in making our cinnamon rolls is to make our bread dough. I am making a big batch. This is enough to do about four to five pans of cinnamon rolls or you could break it up and make homemade bread out of it as well. But the first thing you wanna do is get your yeast started. So in a small bowl, you're going to mix three tablespoons of yeast, one tablespoon of sugar, and you're going to add that to one cup of warm water. You just want to stir this until it's dissolved, and then you're going to let it rise on your counter for about 10 minutes or until it has doubled in size. Now it's time to get our dry ingredients mixed together. So in a very large bowl, you're going to need 10 cups of flour, a half a cup of sugar, one tablespoon of salt, and you're gonna get those dry ingredients mixed together. And then you can see that our yeast has really risen over there. So as soon as we get this mixed together, we can add that in. Now to add in our liquid ingredients, we're just going to create a well in the middle and then you're going to add to that your yeast mixture. Also, you want to add a half cup of vegetable oil, or you can use avocado oil, I have used that as well, and then three cups of warm water. Now I take my Danish dough whisk and just mix it together and it will be a very shaggy consistency. And then you're gonna let it rest for about 15 minutes. I just cover it. I use this time to kind of clean the kitchen up, wash my hands. And then once it sits for about 15 minutes, then this is when you're going to do your kneading process. I will tell you this is my favorite dough probably that I make it is so versatile. You can use it for rolls, you can use it for bread. Of course, we're using it today for the cinnamon rolls. But once that has sat for about 15 minutes, I'm just gonna punch it down, knead it for a little bit. This takes maybe a minute or two. And then I will cover it and let it rise for about an hour or so, just until it's doubled in size. It really doesn't take that long for this dough to rise. Um, it does help to keep it in a warm place. So today I am going to open my oven, just stick it inside the oven and turn the oven light on. And I'll let that sit in there for about an hour. Now, if you're making these for Christmas morning, you could put your dough together and then stick this in the refrigerator and let it proof in there overnight. That works too. 
um, and I have done it both ways but you'll see that it rose very well for about an hour like I said I'm just going to scrape the sides down and just punch it down a couple more times but this is where we're going to start making our cinnamon rolls if I were making the spread into rolls or into loaf bread I would probably let it do a second rise just to get that lighter consistency but we don't have to do that with cinnamon rolls I'm going to divide our dough in half and just work with that uh, first half first and I cleaned my counter really well and put a little oil down on the surface and now we're going to roll out our dough now to me this is the fun part I love the process of rolling out the cinnamon roll dough and filling it and of course I love the process of eating them even more but you just want to use your rolling pin and just roll it out into this rectangle and then you're going to brush butter all over the surface I did melt mine a little bit in the microwave but you just really want to get it soft you know where you can spread it over the top of your dough now you're going to sprinkle in a generous amount of white sugar just right over top of the butter and then this is the part where you could add your pumpkin if you wanted to um, or apple butter but this part time I'm just going to add just cinnamon and brown sugar so lots and lots of cinnamon don't skip on that um, also the same thing with the brown sugar you really want to make sure this is completely covered really work it to the ends I don't do a great job on this batch but you want to get it all the way to the end so that each one of your cinnamon rolls is full of that yummy goodness next you're going to just roll this up into a log and then you want to cut your cinnamon rolls now I found the best way to do this is with unscented dental floss now I know that sounds really weird but trust me on this one it works it slides right through your dough and makes just beautiful even cuts and that is important too to make sure you get all your rolls about the same size because that way they will bake evenly in your oven so get those cut and just put them on a either grease baking sheet or I've lined these with parchment paper and once you get them all on your sheet pan then you're going to bake these in your oven at 375 degrees for about 20 minutes I did want to make mention that you'll see that some I put on the baking sheet these are the ones that we are going to eat um, ourselves and keep for our family but the others I put in a cake pan and I made sure that they were touching because I wanted them to come out all connected together this is the pan that I'm actually going to gift and I just thought that was a neat presentation to have them all you know connected and then that way they can be reheated and pulled apart whenever the person is ready to eat them okay while our cinnamon rolls are baking in the oven it's time to make our cream cheese frosting again so simple you're going to need just four ingredients and that is a softened stick of butter and then softened eight ounce um, cream cheese block and then to that we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract and then two cups of powdered sugar and I'm just using my hand mixer on this you want to get this really mixed really really well where it is spreadable and as soon as those cinnamon rolls come out of the oven you're going to slather this on top and oh my goodness get ready for the amazing smells that are going to be permeating your house I'm telling you it smelled like Cinnabon in here and who wouldn't want to wake up to the fragrance of fresh baked cinnamon rolls on Christmas morning it is a little bit of prep work but so worth it y'all I know you can open up a can of cinnamon rolls from your grocery store but there's just something about these it's just nothing like the homemade fresh cinnamon rolls so take some time to make this if it's not for Christmas morning maybe you know when you have some downtime or on the weekends but definitely take the time to make these homemade cinnamon rolls
my family enjoyed these so much. Alex had a friend over on this morning, so those teenage boys did not take any time destroying these cinnamon rolls. And then we were able to gift the others. I had bought these beautiful, I guess it's like a cheese board, cutting board at Aldi. And I gifted those to friends and neighbors and put a, a package of cinnamon rolls on top and some of my little homemade stovetop potpourri. Some of the times homemade gifts are some of the best gifts to give and receive. I know that I appreciate those things. So definitely take the time to make these. They are delicious. I'm telling y'all, those cinnamon rolls are absolutely delicious. You can make them and then freeze them and be able to pull them out on a busy morning when you don't want to cook, even after Christmas. So you definitely want to put that one in your recipe box. All right, the second one I want to show you is our breakfast casserole. Now this is definitely one that is made ahead. You actually put it together the night before and we were a little rushed because we made this one for a Sunday school breakfast with our Sunday school class this past weekend. And so I completely forgot to film Tim cooking the meat and he we shredded our own potatoes and cooked those as well. And I forgot to add that footage in, but I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step process. Of course, all these recipes will be linked down below for you or typed out if I don't have the link. So I will show you what we got of that footage. Okay, so I really wanted to show y'all this breakfast casserole that I try to make every Christmas and I made a reel on it, I think it was last year. But I wanted to make it and show you again this year and we started the process and I completely forgot to record it. So I'm just going to kind of talk through the first part. But this breakfast casserole is one that you can make ahead. And so tonight, we're making it tonight, we're, we're putting it together tonight. I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator overnight and then I'm going to bake it in the morning for a Sunday school breakfast that we're having at church. But I wanted you to see the bottom layer, if I can get underneath here. <laughs> My husband cooked all the potatoes for it. So we just used these Yukon Gold potatoes and he chopped them up and then cooked those on his um, flat top grill outside. And we also cooked two pounds of breakfast sausage. I just used what I had on hand. I had one pound of regular and then one pound of hot, but you can use whatever you prefer. So the first layer, you just layer in the bottom of your nine by 13 casserole dish. You just want to do your pre-cooked hash browns. The recipe I'm gonna post down below is going to give you the option of buying the frozen hash browns. That's what I normally use. But this year, because not only are frozen hash browns hard to come by right now, like hard to find the grocery store, but everything is so expensive. And I found that frozen potatoes are one of those items that have really jumped in price. <clears throat> jumped in price. So we just decided to go ahead and use the potatoes we already had. All right, so the next step is we want to start our eggs and we're going to beat eight eggs. These eggs are from our chickens who have definitely slowed down in their production right now, this time of year with the days shorter and the colder days, they typically will slow down. So we went from getting about eight eggs a day to now, I think today we got two. One day this week we got one. So we're thankful for whatever we can get. And I hope that I don't have to go back to the store and start buying eggs. But if I do, I know it's just for a season. Now that we have our eggs beat, we are going, I'm just going to season our eggs with just a little bit of salt and pepper because Tim said he did a really good job of seasoning the potatoes and the sausage. I think he used some seasoned salt. I don't know what else, but I believe him because he is better at seasoning things than I am, in his opinion. In my opinion. <laughs> yep. He always tells me I don't season it enough. So, all right, we'll add a little bit more for Tim. Okay. But I don't want to overdo it because, you know, we're not the only ones eating this tomorrow. 
All right, I'm going to add two cups of milk to the eggs, but because I already have my cheese measured out and I wanna use this to measure my milk, I'm gonna do this part first. So we're just going to sprinkle two cups of shredded cheese. You can use whatever cheese you want. We had a little bit of cheddar left um, over and then I, I had some Monterey Jack. So I'm just kind of doing a mix of cheddar and Monterey Jack, but you can do all cheddar, you can do all Monterey Jack, you can do whatever cheese you like. Okay, now we're gonna use our measuring cup and we're gonna measure out two cups of milk. And if this is confusing you, just remember that I will link this recipe down below so you'll have all of the step-by-step -step instructions in the order that probably makes better sense. <laughs> this is a very, very easy and delicious dish. So all you're gonna do is you're just gonna pour your egg mixture right over top like that. And I'm just gonna take this and kinda Move it around a bit just to make sure that it gets even. And that is it. I'm gonna cover it up once it cools a little bit more because we did just cook that meat. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator overnight. And then in the morning, I'm gonna take it out and I'll bring you back at that point. Well, you guys, I went to sleep that night. Things got a little busy getting up, trying to get ready and get out the door the next morning that I completely forgot to film again. But I baked this in our oven for 350 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes. It turned out amazing. Everyone enjoyed it. This is such an easy recipe and one that is so helpful on those busy mornings. So definitely give this one a try. All right, and the final one I have for you today are sheet pan pancakes. Now, I have to be honest, this is the first time I've ever tried the pancakes on a sheet pan. It's definitely something that I will be doing again. They were not only delicious, but so easy. My favorite part about it is that I didn't have to stand here at the counter making pancakes on the griddle and all the time that that takes. I just poured them on a sheet pan and they were ready to go. So I'm going to show you how we made pumpkin pancakes today using the sheet pan. Sheet pan pancakes. What a neat idea. I did not come up with it, but thank you to the one that did. You can use any type of pancake recipe on this um, method that you want to. Today we're having pumpkin pancakes. This is a family favorite and gets requested quite often no matter what time of the year it is so I'm gonna give you the quick measurements on this it's two and a half cups of any kind of pancake mix that you prefer well plain pancake mix we use like a buttermilk mix and then two tablespoons of brown sugar I just eyeball cinnamon pumpkin pie spice and nutmeg stir your dry ingredients and then to a bowl you're gonna add your wet ingredients that's two eggs a half a cup of pumpkin, one fourth cup of oil, and then one and a fourth cups of milk. I'm using an unsweetened vanilla almond milk. You can use whatever kind of milk you like. And then you're just going to stir up your wet ingredients, add those to your dry ingredients. And typically if I'm making this on the griddle, I'll let my batter sit for about 15 to 20 minutes and that just helps it to rise a little bit makes our pancakes a little fluffier i did not do that this time since this was going into the oven and honestly it did not make a difference at all they turned out so fluffy as you're going to see in just a minute but i think this is just really a neat idea like i said any pancake mix that you want to try i believe would be just fine and then once you get all this mixed together, you're just going to pour this onto your baking sheet. I am going to use parchment paper, but if you didn't have that and you wanted to just pour it straight onto your, your baking sheet, I would highly recommend that you grease it really well um, because I'm sure that the pancakes would stick to that baking sheet. And then once you pour those onto your sheet pan, you can add any toppings that you want.
Now, as far as adding in things to the pancake mix, today I'm just going to add some chopped pecans, but walnuts, raisins, chocolate chips, whatever you wanted to add to your preferred pancake mix, you could do that. And you could also add like different things for each section, depending on what your family enjoys. Now I bake this for about 12 to 15 minutes at 425 degrees and it turned out absolutely perfect. I moved it onto the cutting board just so I could cut the pieces a little bit easier. But I really enjoyed this with some warm maple syrup. So that's what I'm adding to mine. Definitely try this method out. It's so easy, eliminates all that time that you'll have to stand there and flip those pancakes on Christmas morning. Now they did turn out more like a cake consistency, but Alex was a huge fan of these and said, I need to make them like this more often. So we will definitely be trying different options. I'm excited to experiment maybe add in some fruit or like I said chocolate chips next time so really the sky is the limit well that's all I have for you today be sure to try these recipes. I know you're going to love them. I can't believe we are this close to Christmas and we are talking about Christmas morning. It just blows my mind. I think every year that passes, we just it just moves quicker and quicker. I do love Christmas and I'm trying to enjoy every little moment. I hope that you are too. I hope that you are having a wonderful holiday season with the ones you love most. I'm gonna try to get one more video out between now and Christmas for you. I've got some Christmas baking to do, some Christmas goodies, and so I'm gonna try to bring you along for that. But right now, I've got some Christmas presents to wrap, and I won't be bringing you along for that, but I better get busy on that. So until next time, remember to live simply, use what you have, enjoy the moments you've been given, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Merry Christmas, friends. Mm -hmm.